Our very own Maytha Al Hassan did a field report on a proposal that would basically spend $2 billion worth of Los Angeles taxpayer money toward what was labeled as a mental health facility. But in reality, it was essentially another way to imprison individuals who are suffering from mental health issues. So the Los Angeles Board of Supervisors has been dealing with activists who have been calling for the this contract to be rescinded. Now, there are a bunch of different elements of this that I want to talk about before we go to the first video, Maytha. First off, who would be building this facility? Well, this $1.7 billion contract would be given to the McCarthy Building Inc, right? So this is the company behind a a, a mental health facility in Stockton, California, that's been uh, dealing with a lot of controversy because there's been a, quite a bit of neglect and abuse. So, uh, just to give you some information on that, California Healthcare Facility in Stockton, which was built by McCarthy, was the subject of a scathing report on poor mental health management at the facility. In his report, California's chief prison psychiatrist, Dr. Michael Golding, accused officials of misrepresenting the care that thousands of prisoners were getting, putting the health and lives of inmates at risk. At the facility, which was at the center of a horrifying incident in 2017, that saw an inmate pull one of her eyes out and swallow it. Wow. Yep. So these are the people yep. behind McCarthy is the organization, the company behind this questionable facility in Stockton, California. And Los Angeles hands them a contract worth $1.7 billion to build this new facility in LA. And luckily, activists got active. And demanded that, again, the, the LA Board of County Supervisors pull back on this contract. Now, I want to go to your field report and then we'll fill in some blanks. Let's take a look at the first video. The McCarthy Building Company is trying to build what they're calling a mental health facility, which is sort of code for a jail for people with mental illness. So it's criminalizing mental illness. And there are alternatives to incarceration that exist, they're just underfunded. We have been working for several months, uh, Reform LA Jails, Justice LA, and many, many other organizations to make sure that the County Board of Supervisors stand tall and canceling the contract with the McCarthy Building Company. We believe that we should not move forward with the $1.7 billion jail plan. We believe that mental health care should be treated sensitively, that we should be thinking about all the ways that we can protect our families and communities. I'm standing with the hard work of organizers and people that are actually doing the work um, and caring for our communities and demanding that we cancel this contract. You know, for me, this is a very personal story. In some ways, it's like my life's legacy to avenge what happened to my family. Can you speak on that? Sure, yes. Uh, in 1999, my brother was brutally beaten by the sheriff's department. He almost died in LA County jails. And what I would learn is that dozens of families, hundreds of families um, lost their loved ones inside those jails and uh, ended up having uh, deeply traumatic experiences inside those jails. Not that the economic argument is the most salient, but it costs $65,000 to imprison somebody in a mental health institution when it could cost $20,000 to provide them with mental health treatment. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell folks who that was in case oh, they don't yes. know? Yeah, so that is Patrice Colors, who is the co-founder of Black Lives Matter. She's the chairperson for Reform LA Jails, which is a ballot initiative that's gonna come on Los Angeles ballot in March 2020. And she is really the person who has led this fight for over two decades. And I wanna add a little bit more to the Stockton conversation. Mm -hmm. So somebody from Stockton who is an organizer was also at that rally. And he said that it cost $900 million to build that facility. And it was so expensive that the city of Stockton Stockton went bankrupt and the public hospital became insolvent. Right. So it, there was just too many arguments stacked up against this idea of trying to hide a mental health institution as a facility that it was actually a jail. Right. So, so guys, I, I don't want you to think like, okay, so that's it. We're gonna get rid of all jails, or okay, one person ate their eyeballs, so they could want to close down everything. No, that there's a track record of that facility uh, doing. A, a miserable job according to the people who who put together that report, right? And so why do we want to replicate that in LA? And and if you're wondering as I was, well, is this just about LA or is it more systematic and and what percentage of people are mentally ill 
uh, in prisons. And I was blown away by this number. The medically or mentally ill now make up an estimated 70% of people held in the county jail system, yep. 70%. So we're doing it all wrong. Uh, all we're doing is we're just criminalizing things that shouldn't be criminal and stuffing people into jails. It, you know, Most of you are familiar with marijuana, obviously. That doesn't make any sense like having a beer, but we put millions of people in prison over it. But you know, we also are doing it with the mentally ill, but most people don't see that. Yep. Yep. Right, exactly, they don't see that. And, and it goes back to the argument that we make often, which is oftentimes the powerless don't have a voice, right? And so it's, it's easy for them to, to deal with this type of neglect and abuse without anyone speaking out on their behalf, which is why it's so important to have these activists go out there and demand a change and reform in the system, right? Because remember, it's the taxpayers who fund these types of projects, which then turn around and brutalize more people. People who can't help the condition they're in. They have a mental health condition. They don't need to be punished, they don't need to be criminalized. They need actual mental health care. Right, right, right. And the way that the system is designed now is that you're already criminalized mm -hmm. if you have a mental health issue because who do you call? You call 911 and they're the first ones on the scene and they're only trained to be aggressive and to tie people down. And Patrice's story is so, it's so emblematic of actually what happened. So her brother was a teenager, his name is Monty, and she actually writes about it in her book, When They Call You a Terrorist. And he almost died mm -hmm. and he had schizoaffective disorder. It worsened and that's the other part of the story that people go in and their condition gets so much worse inside. You can't get better in isolation. You have to be in community to actually be transformed. Um, and that was what they were missing. So Metha, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but why would LA grant this contract to a company that has this terrible record, right? Right. So I think what had happened, and we spoke about this a little bit before the story, is that there was a $3.5 billion jail expansion plan. And so the victory earlier this year was that they got the, the county board of supervisors to pull out of building a women's prison. And so they have this other jail called Men's Central Jail in, around downtown LA. And it is ranked as one of the worst um, jails in the world. It actually has the most people who have mental health issues um, in the US mm -hmm. confined at that jail. And it's deplorable, deplorable conditions. So somebody thought on the board of supervisors that, oh, why don't we transform that location into a mental health institution? But I do think the CD. A uh, story that's not being told is that they're trying to move in the houseless population. Hmm. And especially yeah. gearing up for LA's Olympic oh, uh, 2028. 20, and that's actually gonna be part of the work that activists are gonna continue to do is put pressure on the board, which again, this was like a monumental moment. We're gonna get in, hopefully get into the vote. Yes. But um, they're gonna continue to push the board to not only not criminalize mentally ill folks, but not criminalize people who are houseless. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so uh, with that said, let's go to the vote. Again, you have these activists, uh, you know, really applying pressure toward the LA uh, Board of Supervisors. So, how did they vote? This next video will show you. Hi, my name is Patrice Colors, uh, chairperson for Reform LA Jails. I want to start off by thanking Supervisor Melissa Lee and Supervisor Kuehl for bringing this motion. Uh, to this meeting. I think as a formula jails, we have been talking about this issue for the last year. We were able to get a quarter million signatures from Los Angeles voters that were really challenging the idea of incarceration and incarcerating people with mental illness in particular. As many of you know, uh, for the last 20 years, I have been working on this issue specifically with my sibling who was uh, really beaten inside the sheriff's department and has um, uh, never received the treatment he deserved. And so to have this uh, process on, uh, to be in conversation today is a bit surreal. Um, and I feel proud to be an Angelino today. So they did vote to rescind the contract, which shows you that activism works. You just need to fight together in solidarity and, and get things done.
I love seeing that. Right, yeah, there were 225 people who participated in the public comment. You saw Patrice Cullors, who is one of the 225. It was five hour meeting and people, you saw how many people stayed. The whole room was actually packed at the very beginning, but there were coalitions across LA that were involved in this. And I think the other interesting point to note here is that one of the board supervisors, Hilda Solis really spearheaded canceling this contract and Sheila Kuehl was a co-author and Sheila Kuehl had, Amazing abolitionist language, she said that that moment felt like when the Prime Minister of England introduced a bill that into Parliament that would eventually abolish the slave trade in 1807. That's what that moment felt like because there was such a paradigmatic shift in terms of relying on prisons to be the ones to solve the problem. And so most of the conversation was how could they put care first and really use cages as either last resort or not at all. And just to reiterate one thing that Matha said, when someone calls for help because of a mental illness situation, send doctors first. Mm -hmm. We're doing it all wrong. So we need to, not just in the prison system, but overall in our holistic look at this, take a step back and go, let's take a look at the percentage of the problem and how should we deal with it. Cops are basically hammers and so all they see is nails. Uh, so you're sending the wrong guys into the wrong situation. So let's fix it together. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.